What's going on, fam? Welcome to the Traffic, Sales, and Profit podcast. My name is Lamar Tyler, and I'm here to help you if you're a black entrepreneur trying to figure out how to get to where you need to get to in business, or if you're trying to figure out how in the world can I build wealth, sustainable wealth. We're talking about 200 years worth of wealth. You're in the right spot. And today, right, you're going to get nuggets, amazing information, because I'm here with my friend and family, Monray from Millionaire Mob University. What's up, Monray? Also known as Marketing by Monray. Right, they might not like who's this mom. I know, I know is I'm on the gram. I know marketing by is that. Yes. What's going on? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good, and and I'm excited. Thanks for joining us on the Traffic Sales and Profit mm-hmm. Podcast. Um, I'm excited to have you here because I think you have an awesome story. Um, and I know you got the book coming out and everything to yes. tell that story, but yes. we're gonna get to that in a second. <laughs> but I love that you got a story, so I want to talk about that. But then I also want to. I'm sure the people want some marketing nuggets from you, and I always see you sharing your marketing nuggets online. I'm curious, like, do you share your story a lot? You may and maybe I always miss it, but. Yeah, no, I said, so I always give a little snippet of it every okay. time I go live, like the brief version, but not all the time. Okay. Like, you know. And that's what the, the book is. <laughs> yeah, right? so the book, the book is, is like the full story, the inside of it from when I was, you know, working at McDonald's at 16 to how I made a million dollars. Wow. So listen, y'all, you need to pay attention. Like, that, that how I make a million dollars part, somebody perked up. There's like McDonald's, I work there. There's like a million. I ain't made a million yet. If you ain't made a million yet, you need to make sure you are in this conversation. Yes. So let's talk about it. Like, like before, right, we're going to get to the million dollar piece, but like where did this all start? So I, so I feel like I always had like an entrepreneurship spirit, mm-hmm. but I've never seen an entrepreneur before. Like my mm-hmm. family, there's nobody in my family that's entrepreneurs. They all work. And so when I was 14, I worked at um, a beauty salon. So I used to like do hair and clean up. And that that was the first entrepreneur I seen. But I always used to love to work. Like I would go to McDonald's and Backyard Burger and I was working 18 hour shifts. Like I had a family to feed at home. (laughs) (laughs) So, and mom was like, why do you work all the time? I was like, it's fun. Like I just made it fun. So that's when I kind of really discovered my work ethic. You know, I love it. That's something I tell people all the time is that A players are A players no matter what they do. Yep. It's like, you know, A players, when they work nine to five, they was A players nine to five. Like when they was high school, uh, you know, trying to get extra money to have fun, they was A players having fun. Like like I tell people, like you don't live a life of being a C player and then when you start your business, all of a sudden you You expect to be an A player. It don't work like that. So I I love the fact (laughs) that you talked about that. So... Um, all right, so you're 16, you're grinding, you're making it happen, you're working these 18-hour shifts, yeah. uh, acting like you got a family <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> at home to feed, right? Um, so so you get the work ethic. Like, how do you start to mix and figure out the entrepreneurship part? Because you said you didn't see it growing up. Right. Or nobody's around you. Like, like how, how'd you get tapped into so it? So I thought that I was supposed to be making money from doing something else. So I mm-hmm. remember seeing this girl at school and she used to sell these, well, she didn't sell them. She used to make these jeans and she would rip them up and they'd be all cute. I'm like, why you ain't selling them? So I took my check and went to the store at like Goodwill and bought all these jeans and I started trying to make them. The jeans was trash, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like they were trash. And I was like, yeah, clearly that's not my skill. But when I got to college, that's when I really discovered that I wanted to own a business. Um, But I really kind of stumbled into it by, I was an assistant for a makeup artist. She didn't know what an assistant did. I didn't either. So I just started doing stuff for her. I was doing events and marketing and branding and things that I know today what it is. But I was just doing it. And so I was like, oh, I want to do this for other people. And that's when I discovered it. Like, oh, I'm going to be a business owner. Okay, nice. So I got, this is a totally random question. Okay. Uh, when you was making the jeans, did homegirl know you was trying to make jeans? Yo. <laughs> and then when she saw your stuff, she was like, I told you. like, what? I didn't even let nobody see them jeans. That's how <laughs> ugly they was. I, it was like trash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I was curious. That, that was on my mind. All right, so um, so now you're there, you're in college. Mm-hmm. Um, you start doing it for other people. Mm-hmm. So when you say, like, other people, like, what kind of businesses do they have? Like, what, what were they doing? Yeah, so I did it for the makeup artists first. Okay. And then I was in Hattiesburg, Mississippi at this time. Okay. So for people that don't know, I'm from Memphis. So Hattiesburg is about six hours away from home. And so I was doing it for people inside of Hattiesburg, like um, hair companies, different bakeries, and then New Orleans is only an hour away. So I would travel to New Orleans and meet different businesses and just kind of put myself out there. So I would do it for any and every business. And how were these new businesses finding out about you? 
me going to them. Oh, really? So you <laughs> yeah. just straight up hitting them up? I answer. would literally, I remember like the bakery client that I had, I was like, it be dry in here. Like, you need some help, <laughs> you know? So, and then the clothing business I work with, same thing, you know? So I just would go to them, but I didn't, I really wasn't making any money at the time. Like, mm. I was charging them like $200 to do photo shoots or, you know, whatever mm. that they, I feel like they needed at the time. But I remember my first client that I felt like I really had made it, my client, she was paying me about thirteen hundred dollars a month. Okay, and she Retainer had a retainer out here. I see you. Right, I was like, I don't, it's it's a vibe. But she had, I remember she was a hair company in Hattiesburg. She had a Bentley. Like mm. I'm like, oh, this lady got money. <laughs> like I'm making it, you know. But then she stopped paying her retainer, so did. <laughs> it was crazy. But that's where I discovered campaigns. Like that's where I started doing the content that I do today. Okay, so let's talk about, for the people that don't know, you talk about campaign. What is a campaign? So a campaign, the definition of a campaign is the organized course of actions to achieve a goal. A lot of times people think that it's like the power remakes or the upgrade. You, like you could do that to attract your audience, but really it's just a strategic way to you to get everything done that you got to get done. You got to do all the things. So how you going to get all the things done? And so it's just having a roadmap to get it done. That's what we teach. Uh, you know, I love that. Um, uh, Ronnie, who's my wife, for the people who may, may watch, don't know. But Ronnie was talking to me. She was telling somebody that same thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, me and her, I, she, I think she had a call to Mass and I was asking her, like, hey, how the call go? Mm -hmm. And she was saying, like, I was telling somebody, like, if you want to launch something, like, you just doing, like, some random thing here. Right. Is not a can't. Like, you need an actual concerted effort where, and I feel like all the time people like, well, what things should I do? We like all of them. All of them. Like do all the things, right? <laughs> like, do you find that, is that what people, is that a mistake people make? Absolutely. And I think that's why when I discover campaigns, a lot of the times people think it's about the output, like the visuals mm -hmm. and the things yeah. that people see. And I'm like, nah, the reason why my campaigns work is the back end. Like it's the the preparation, it's the strategy, it's making sure that everything that I need to do is actually getting done. But people don't do it. Like they like, I'm just gonna do social media or mm -hmm. I'm just gonna do website. Like, no, you gotta do it all to get it to get it popping. <laughs> now, you know, I, I love that. And um um if people aren't familiar with you, right? I love that yeah. you had a campaign recently where it was a power remake, yeah. right? And you were Mary J. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tejada, right? You're more Ray Tejada out here in these streets. <laughs> All right. Uh, you had the kids trying to get them back in line yes. before their daddy come home out of jail. I don't, I don't know what's going right. But, but I love that. But I, I love how you said too, right? Like that just grabs your attention, but it's the back end. Mm -hmm. Cause I can see, I would imagine people come to you and use that as an excuse. Well, I can't do, I can't do a whole movie photo shoot like what's your response to those people that say that's their reason why they can't do a campaign all the time even before i started to teach campaigns i always make people acknowledge the fact that they've decided in their mind that they can't do it hmm. and a lot of times they decide they like i can't do that i can't remake that my product doesn't work for that my service like you know how people are they yeah. just make excuses right. right and so then i say you've already decided that you can't do the thing that you actually need to do to get everything done hmm. because we have an eight-step process Process to do our campaigns and that allows you to go from launching with legion or getting your leads mm -hmm. all the way to pivoting and making sure you're monitoring your data and everything so it's just that you have to decide that you're going to do it and it's not really about the you know the glitz and glams and the, the yeah. videos and visuals and all of that that attracts people but we have campaigns every single month like every month and some of them are light campaigns some of them are more heavy depending on what our goal is and so you can do it you just have to do all the strategic things behind it mm. and you know I, I love that as, as you were saying that it made me think um things are really so easy right now mm -hmm. like for people to make these excuses because because the thing is like when me and ronnie started out um like it wasn't access like technology wasn't what technology is today mm -hmm. like like half of, of what i shoot now is on my new phone yeah because, like, literally, it just gives me easy access to right. cut and do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And and it looks Good. almost the same as, like, right. all the cameras we got in the studio, right? <laughs> right. So, so where before, people may have said, all right, you know, I can't afford $10,000 somebody come shoot this, do whatever. Like, if you yep. take, like, a couple courses, got a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of hustle. That's it. You can make it happen on your own. And people don't even realize a lot of the visual, even though I have a videographer, a lot of the videos that we do on the go be on his phone. 
Wow. Like, because he just like, oh, let me pull it out right quick instead of like setting the camera up and all of that kind of stuff. So I tell people like, you just wanted to have an excuse because I'm telling you and breaking down all the reasons why Mm. you can do it. And going back to the definition, it's only an organized course of action to achieve a goal. Nobody said nothing about no money. Nobody said nothing about videographer. They just said you need to be organized. You have to have multiple actions and you got to have a goal. That's That's it. So, so, all right. So let's go back to your story. Mm -hmm. So, now you're moving and shaking out here. You got a fifteen hundred dollar retainer. Yeah. Did that that fifteen hundred that change your lifestyle? Did listen, you upgrade the ride? Did you listen? <laughs> was you like, oh, this is the first of many? You know, I was already kind of balling because you know in college you get the <laughs> refund checks. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is cute until she stopped paying, and I was like, dang, like what? I'm... So I kept working with her for about four more months. So I'm like, okay, by the time she started paying again, I got five thousand dollars built up, <laughs> and I'm like, dang, she not gonna Sweet. pay no more. <laughs> she about done. She got no more money. So <laughs> so she kept using your services. She just. Well, yeah, because I'm a nice person. So yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm going I'm to wait around so you get your check or whatever you got to do. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was trash. <laughs> all right. So so what happens next? Like, do you just keep doing this all the way through college mm-hmm. um, and then you transition out or the things blow up and you leave college? Like, like what, what was the next step? Yeah. So, OK, I started the business at 19. OK, I started working. I started doing campaigns with her and then other people started hiring me to do their visuals and different strategies and things of that nature but then by the time I got to senior year I quit like doing it full time because people wasn't paying I'm like y'all this is gonna cost you know <laughs> and so um start to know your work yeah I'm like you know I'm, I'm doing something <laughs> out here he's like man I know this lease worth 1500 a month because <laughs> I was already getting it I had yeah. help her make a hundred thousand wow. dollars I'm like you know we I need to be paid so but I started going I worked at um Victoria's Secret. Okay. And so I started seeing like, okay, let me get a job to make sure I can get consistent income because these bills is billing right now. Yep. So I'm working at Victoria's Secret, but then somebody done made me mad, so I quit. And then I left <laughs> college and it was time to graduate and I literally moved to Atlanta in two weeks. Wow. I packed everything up and moved to Atlanta and didn't now, have anything. Now, was that, was part of the move because of business? in Atlanta being known for business and you like, hey, I'm going to do my entrepreneur thing there? Yep. Or was it just like, hey, I was going to go to Atlanta? Yeah, so I already wanted to go to Atlanta. I wanted to go to school in Atlanta, but my okay. mama tricked me. She told me that if I went to school somewhere, you know, because I want to go to Clark Atlanta. And okay. apparently their tuition is high. And so she was like, well, if you go to Clark Atlanta, you're not going to get a car. And I was like, well, I'm going to go to this school so I can get a car. I still didn't get no car. But <laughs> Got so to, right, to this day, I like the I'm way like, your mama think. I, 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 like the, I, like, I like the way she thinks. Nah, 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 nah. So I was like, I was determined to get to Atlanta, you know, because I knew businesses were here. I knew I needed to be here. I had never been to Atlanta before. Wow. So as I'm coming, I came here for a conference maybe about three weeks before I moved. But before that, I had never been to Atlanta. You just knew you wanted to be I there. just knew I needed to be in the building. Now, let me, let me ask you this based, based on Atlanta, because mm-hmm. a lot of people always ask me, like, what is what are your thoughts around Atlanta? Like, is it the mecca for black entrepreneurs? Like, if somebody's a black entrepreneur, yeah. you know, because there's a lot of talk around and hype right. around. And I think people on the outside are always like, like, is it really like that? What's right, the hype? Right. Like, 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 what do you, and I'm sure people ask you this all the time. Like, what do you say to people? It's, a, it's different. Like, yeah. I even want to move sometimes. And I'm like, you just can't, like, even when I go and travel and go out of town, I'm like, dang, where are the black people at? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's just different with being in yeah. Atlanta. Because you almost forget that it's in Georgia. Because Georgia is very yeah. rural. Yeah, Atlanta ain't Georgia. No, it's a yeah. whole nother state, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but no, Atlanta is definitely a great place for business owners. It's, I do know now that it's not the only only place that you can thrive, right. but it's definitely a great place to just feel us. You know, that, that's interesting. When we moved down, um, one of the reasons we moved, because I know I was going to move to the South somewhere. Okay. But it was, too, it was very similar to what you said. One thing, I used, I used to work for a company uh, out of Texas. I, don't know, I hate to say this. People in Dallas going to hate me for it. <laughs> Maybe things, have, things have changed. Y'all have progressed, right? Things have changed. <laughs> so I really like Dallas a lot. Okay. But I ain't see the black people nowhere but mm-hmm. on the south side, south mm-hmm. of the city. Mm-hmm. And I literally could be like somewhere, you know, we in a nice restaurant, blah, blah, somewhere else. Right. And I'm like, same thing you said, like, where are these black <laughs> folks hiding? Exactly. And we riding through downtown in the middle of the day. And I'm through downtown. Yeah. And I'm like, where the black people at? Right. Because like, I'm not seeing them. And I'm uh, being originally from the D.C. area. 
I'm used to seeing us. We gonna be in the poorest neighborhood, and we gonna be in the most expensive. Like you ain't, right. you ain't gonna dodge us. Yeah. And I don't care. Like it be the most expensive restaurant in the city. We might have even money to be there, but we gonna be up in there making it's something happen, right? Something. So it was, it was a, a shock to me when I started moving around. I was like, black people ain't everywhere like this. <laughs> You're right. So, so Atlanta gave me that, but then on the business side, what it was is that everyone I knew that was doing what I wanted to do in the online and digital space, mm-hmm. they all were here. Mm. And I was like, I need to be there. And, and I right. think what it was that I saw, um, because I came like DC area, it's a lot of successful black folks mm-hmm. make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Here's a lot of success, successful black, black folks make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. In DC area, I feel like most of them were employees. Mm. They work for the government, federal government, government contractors, right. whatever. Like here's entrepreneurs. Right. And one of the biggest things I saw at the time was different now was the cost of living was so much lower too. Mm. So, so. For me to come down here, like I remember when we first came, like when I first left my nine to five, like mm-hmm. our mortgage dropped a thousand dollars a month. What? And it just was way easy to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. When it just don't cost you so much to live. Right. Um, but now everything is super high expensive. So <laughs> exactly. all this if you ain't get hit by now. Just don't go. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> just like, you might have missed it. That last little housing spike. Yeah, not for real. Um, but that's that's interesting, right? So when you came in, was it everything you thought it would be for your business? Or no, it took some time to build no, up? No, it or? definitely took time. Because, okay, one thing about me, and I think it's a trait that I have that helps me be successful, I will do anything once. So mm. as long, I don't care what it is, yeah, I'm just going to jump same, off the I'm porch. The same way, that's funny. <laughs> I'm jumping off the porch. So when I got here, I found out that I would, I didn't get my apartment. So I'm like, dang, where I'm finna stay? I can't tell my mama I'm going back home. <laughs> like I was, she'd be like, come on back home, girl. I I get your car. <laughs> no, if you come back home, no, sh- <laughs> lie. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all right, I gotta figure it out. You know, cry a little bit, then I figured it out. So the next day, I went and found another apartment mm. and got in or whatever. But I ain't had no furniture. Like I even had in our documentary, you see me videos of me cooking ham sandwiches on the stove with mm. no nothing. Like, but I didn't care. Like I was just so excited to be here. And I knew it was that I thought it was the next level for my business, but it took a minute. <laughs> it took a minute. All right. So as you're coming, this is mm-hmm. interesting. I'm just all in this story. Right? <laughs> uh, y'all look, get the book. What's the name of the book? It's called The Campaign of My Life. All right. Campaign of My Life. And when's it coming out? It's coming out May 8th, which is my birthday. Okay. May 8th, 20, 2022. So yes. uh, for everybody binging on episodes later on to get to it, yes. it's already out. Make sure you jump on it. Yes. All right. So, so this is good. I'm just intrigued by this whole story. <laughs> Um, so how did you finally get a foothold of doing business here? Or did you get like a nine to five first? So I tried to, I had got my degree. I'm like, I'm gonna go give me a little marketing job. And I got (laughs) there and they wanted me to sell bamboo pillows in Kroger. And I'm like, (laughs) all of this creativity, all of this. No, I'm not doing it. So I quit again. (laughs) So, um, then I started to DM people that I thought lived in Atlanta, like other business owners. Okay. And I'm like, listen, your page messed up. You need to do this, 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 and this. Like I just was giving them gems or things in the, in the DMs that I thought could help them. And so then I started getting clients from it. So I got another makeup artist and Mm. I became her assistant. So I love that. I hope everybody's paying attention out there, right? (laughs) She basically delivered value up front. Like that's a nugget. So I feel like too many times, like people make everything so transactional. Right. Like even when they starting out, like I got to get paid because we didn't we didn't roll the like I know my worth thing off the cliff, right? right. So people are like I know my worth, you know I just, you know you I, only, you ain't worth nothing yet. Like, <laughs> it, but I don't think people get that yeah. though, right? Because they think, hey, I went to school for four years, or I got a master's, or maybe I got a doctorate, or right. you know I did my thing on my own for whatever. But like mm-hmm. that piece you say about like knowing your worth go both ways. Mm-hmm. And you may have to know that, like, hey, you know, even though maybe you educationally trained in this topic, right. until you get in the real world, correct, or until you playing with somebody's real money, mm-hmm. or it could even be somebody that came from, hey, I worked at a, I've seen a whole lot of people work at a corporate, I did marketing for, uh, you know, General Motors or right. for Ford or whatever like that. Ford money ain't real money. Right. <laughs> You can you can fumble that whole and it's okay. ad campaign up, right, right. And don't nobody like your boss, like, exactly. hey, let's not do this again, right, right. Like, like when you dealing with small business and you mm-hmm. fumble, somebody like they be like, all right, we put a hundred thousand yep. dollars into these Facebook ads, and that money don't come back, right? It's a situation. It's a, problem. It's a situation. Mm-hmm. All right, so so all right, this is so good. So, <laughs> uh, when Atlanta, you getting a hold of it, you starting to get clients. You mm-hmm. know, you try to get a job, they want you working at the Kroger. <laughs> 
they went to do this uh, the pillow campaign at the Kroger. Oh, they were wild. <laughs> they were like, we heard about these campaigns. We're interested. <laughs> we want you to go to Kroger, uh, kick off this campaign with right. these pillows. Hey, if you're listening, I want you to think about this. Our community needs you. So if I need you to grow your business, it's only one way for you to do it and make it happen, and that is with TSP Propel. TSP Propel is like Netflix for black entrepreneurs. It's a go at your own pace, self-study system of over 50 plus courses. In addition, we give you resources and templates to execute faster. And we're going to do monthly calls with my coaches to make sure you get everything you need and get your questions answered. For more information, visit www.tspropel.com. All right. Um, so you get it. So you start getting traction and mm -hmm. foothold at the same time because you have a massive um, you know, Instagram, social mm -hmm. media presence. Are you building social media presence at the same time? No, I was working. So the thing that I feel like really helped me is that I literally just put my head down and work. Mm. I didn't build my personal brand until towards the end of me working with clients. Gotcha. And so I worked with that makeup artist. Then I was like, well, she ain't paying me number $200 a month. Like this ain't enough. So I went to go get my real estate license. Cause I was like, I wanted to be able to offer commercial properties to my clients whenever I got them. Mm. Well, I told this lady, I was like, I want to be your assistant. You know, she was like, well, you need your license. So I got my license in like two weeks. Wow. And, and so I went to go get my license. I worked for her for a while and then I missed my business. So I started working with different um, clients inside of the entertainment space where I was building their brands and I was doing like their clothing brands, their companies, building it from product development all the way to marketing. And so that's how I kind of started to get my traction with my personal brand. I love it. I love it. So then uh, you get an exposure. Mm -hmm. People by now, people seeing you work with other people. So they exactly. come to you and all that type of thing. How did that feel like like at that point? If you take you back to that point, did you feel like you'd already already made it? Did you no. feel like you was on the cusp of making it? Yeah, I hated it. Like because really? working, <laughs> not I really love the marketing part, but I didn't like the clients because I was working with celebrities. Yeah. So if anybody know, influencers are babies. Like they need hand holding and all of that. <laughs> and I'm like, girl, you got a million followers. Let's work. You yeah. know, we can make some bread. But they really didn't understand the power of the things that they were sitting on, and so that would just frustrate me. And so I always would say, I'm gonna make myself the celebrity. I'm gonna make myself the brand my, myself the influencer so i know that my work ethic was going i was going to depend on me and so as i was working with them i started to get more attraction i started to get more traction with other brands outside of celebrity brands and so that's kind of how i built the agency so all right so we got we got we got to segue and talk about this for a okay because i'm <laughs> I'm real big on um, profit over popularity. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that we learned coming up, right, because we kind of came up in the blog era, mm -hmm. um, where a lot of people came up as bloggers, they ain't around no more. Mm. Because they couldn't focus on, hey, this is a business, right. and I need to make money, right. and having all these people is cool, right. but if I can't move them to an actual product or service, and, and not even just a product or service, right? Because a lot of times, it was two things, right? They would move them to a product or service, that wasn't their own. Right. So a company or brand come in mm -hmm. and give you money and you feeling great. Yep. But they easily could snatch that money away exactly. or they would, you know, we found back in the day, they would be like, hey, you know what? We trying to reach African-American women, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. That's great. But then the next quarter, they say, you know, what? we want to reach Latino women. Mm -hmm. And that is your audience. So that right. money pick up and go. And we weren't in control of our, of our funds. So, so right. can you talk a little bit more about that? Because it may be people that's focused on growing their platforms, TikTok, Instagram, whatever they do, maybe it's LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever, mm -hmm. right? Like how important is it for them not just to grow that program? I mean that platform, but grow it with intention. Yeah. Like like Absolutely. what is that like what should they be like what does that look like to them? Because a lot of people think that you having a whole bunch of followers equals a lot of money. And mm -hmm. it doesn't, right? Like you can I know people under a thousand followers that is making crazy money, yeah. right? <laughs> I think it's just more so about the product or service that you're actually putting out and then being intentional, like you said, with how you're growing your following and who you're actually talking to. Because I know people with millions of followers that don't make no money, literally, with their followers. You you know, you you're blowing my mind. My my <laughs> first conference here in Atlanta was a marketing con internet marketing conference. Okay. One of my friends like Lamar you know, y'all killing the dogs, you got to go to this. So I go mm -hmm. to it and it's all like older white people. Mm -hmm. I'm, I think it might've been like two. It was me. It was like an old black guy. Okay. It was like an old, old black. He's like <laughs> old black granddaddy type. I'm like, what is he doing here? But I'm sitting in the room. I think at the time we got like 200,000 people on Facebook. We got, mm -hmm. you know, people on the email list, all this stuff. And it's what you said. Like these people had like 
1,200 people on their email list. Exactly. No social media. And they were selling like crazy. Like I sell this thing and go in your chair on the porch. Mm -hmm. And they had these six figure, $500,000, $600,000 businesses. Right. And I think we was maybe doing like 70K. Exactly. And we had all of this audience. And I came to that realization, which you just talked about. Like all this means nothing. Nothing. At the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And like, it feels good. Right. And it wasn't like, is it about ego? Is it, I, I mean, what is it? I think it's definitely it? about, it's like you trying to stun on your haters. Like, I got all <laughs> these followers and all of this. But at the end of the day, it's about your bag. You know, like, mm. how much money are you really making from these people? So just making sure you're building it with intentionality. Like, are you getting the right people to follow you? Are you getting them to the right product? Do you know what product they should even be going to? Because social media can be a part of your marketing plan, yeah. right? Like, I'm not saying don't grow your following. Right. I'm just saying that make sure Sure, that's not your main concern. How are you getting them off Instagram in less than seven days? Getting them off Instagram into whatever funnel that you have, so that you can get that email, phone number, and then actually get them to purchase from you. That's good. I love how you said, right? You're not telling them not to. Yeah. We, we used to always do this thing. Uh, it's always this big conversation about mm. reach and influence, because mm. all the people with little pages be like, <laughs> my page may not be that big, but I got influence <laughs> with the people I got, right? right. And I'd be like, and I'll tell people like, hey, I want both. Right. I want a million people. Yeah. And I want to have influence, influence with a million exactly. people, right? And, and I also learned that the more we serve, because I know somebody may be like, ah, you know, those people, and I don't want to just make money off of them because people trip off all that stuff. But I, I learned that the more we serve those people, the more money we make. Yep. And so, like, we had a big audience, but the more we got in tune with what they wanted, exactly. what they came to us for. I mean, is that what you're saying the same month? Yeah, absolutely. So for the people that you saying that don't want to sell, then you're not in business. Mm. You got to sell. Like you have, even if you are serving your people, you have to sell them something because your purpose was supposed to get that person to do something, right? Yeah. Even if it was your, your lip gloss to make them more confident. You know, maybe you're supposed to make them more confident so they can go and ask for a raise from their job. You don't know what you were supposed to do and what God had for you. You need to make sure you're just selling mm. your product and doing what you're supposed to be doing. This is so don't be scared of selling. We got to make some money. <laughs> I love that. I love that because I I think I didn't think about it. But I guess that's a big part of it too. Like like for those people that have audiences already, mm -hmm. besides fear, is there anything else you think holds them back? I think besides fear, it's probably like a lack of knowledge of like mm -hmm. how can I do this? And now it's kind of everybody is doing it, but back then they didn't want to start. They didn't even have the work ethic to hold a business because. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people think, oh, I got the follow and I could just post. But what I would see the difference of the companies that I used to work with, the influencers that I work with, that got up every day, that made sure that a part of creating content was a part of their routine, that they were actually getting the, the back and actually looking at the numbers and packing the orders. Those are the people that made the most money. Just because you got the followers don't mean you just post and then that's it. You got to still do the work, regardless of your platform, who you date, and who your baby daddy is. Like, none of that matters. You got to still make sure you're doing the work. It's only to treat it like a business. Got to. They treat it like, hey, I'm getting up. I'm going to work. Yes. And had that, had that like you talk about, that hard work mentality mm -hmm. to to make it happen. Yep. You know, I, I, I tell people, what's interesting to me is that um, people like yourself, right, that are doing it out here. And I know you have a lot of people say, man, like, I just want to build like Marie. I want to have what she has, mm -hmm. right? they don't realize that a lot of people at the top are like a hard workers, right? <laughs> no, they just think real. like, you might just be chilling. They be like, yeah, no. like you ain't, but like, like they don't, cause they don't see all the work that goes mm -hmm. into it uh, or acknowledge it. But like y'all, like consistently, like the people I see rise to the top are the yeah. people that are the A players that work hard, that treat it seriously, that go mm -hmm. after it. And if it's people, sometimes, you know, somebody can sneak through the cracks. It doesn't, right. but they don't last long. It, absolutely. All right. So, so, um, so tell, take me from, um, you go on, you starting to get traction. How do we get from there to where we are now? Yeah. So I'm starting to get traction and then I partnered, um, with someone to actually, I closed my agency. So I had okay. my agency and I closed it down and I started, I partnered with somebody else to do another agency. It was more of a creative firm. Okay. And so when I did that, it lasted four months. <laughs> wow, that was quick. It was real quick. But I learned a lot. And so in the moment, I'm like, oh, this is the most devastating thing. <laughs> what have I done? You know, I was terrified. But as I was learning when working with clients, I realized that I spent a lot of time on the phone with them teaching. Mm -hmm. Like I was teaching CEOs like, 
okay, the reason why we're doing this in your ass is yeah. because we got to do this, you know, because they would they couldn't have intellectual conversations with me and they yeah. couldn't articulate what they really needed. They would say they needed A, but they really needed H, you yeah. know, and so we yeah. working towards A, but you needed something else. So this is when I learned that CEOs really didn't understand marketing and they're overwhelmed by it. And so that's why I started teaching. So in 2019, that's when the shift started to happen for me. And okay. I'm like, okay, this business is closed down. I got to pay my bills. But I also know I want to teach. But at the time, I was doing like $20 webinars. And so I'm like, let me just keep doing $20 webinars, <laughs> see who show up, you know. And so um, that's what I actually hired a business coach at that time. And so I'm like, dang, I got to really believe in myself. This was $2,000 <laughs> a month at a time, you know. So I'm like, okay. What do I need to do to make this successful? And after the first call with her, she was like, just bundle your old webinars. And I was like, oh, you got, that was smart. Like, you know, <laughs> why well, I didn't think of that. And so I always tell people, like, with coaching, it's not that they're going to tell you something that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like, because the nine times out of ten, you've already heard it before. Yeah. You know what you need to do. But it's being able to see in a bird's eye view From of your business. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so just for her telling me that and, like, Three days after Christmas, I made almost twenty thousand wow. dollars. So I was like, "Oh, let me get the work." <laughs> and so that's how twenty twenty started, and then the trajectory to a million started for me. Now, now, real, because she's like, "Hey, we started this little thing, then we jumped to a million. <laughs> it's, it's like this. It's a so, lot in between. <laughs> so, so real quick, from a high level view, was it just like that explosion? Mm -hmm. Um, was it something new you learned? Was it um, like people just gravitating towards you because now you're the personal brand. Like, yeah. if it was one thing you could pinpoint, which I know is never one thing, it's like a combination right. of things. But it was like, what was the primary thing you felt like led to that explosion? So that? I really feel like, and I think a lot of people do this, like they forget all of the things that they learned in corporate or their yeah. job. One thing that really helped me was doing campaigns and having a strategic way to do it with my eight steps. And the reason is because I learned all of those things through everything I just went through with the clients, yeah. through working at Victoria's Secret, the bamboo job, like all of that <laughs> I learned for, and then I applied it to my business. So a lot of times so people be so quick to get out of corporate or so quick to quit their job. But the people that I hear that's successful, like when I hear Ronnie talk about her story, I was reading her book and she was saying that what she learned from IBM allowed her yep. to know what she's doing today. And I'm like, that's the thing. Like, God will place the things that you need That's before it. he going to put you in a situation. But you got to be humble enough to be like, okay, let me use this, 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 and this to be able to put it together. So I really think it was my past experiences that really led to the explosion. I love it. I love it. So um, this is good. I got like a million, million <laughs> ideas to talk to right here. Then you threw Roddy in there. I'm like, I think Roddy be frustrated at our project compared, compared to our buddies like the IBM right. buddies. Right. She be like, this is She be like, you know, yeah. yeah, like y'all ain't. <laughs> Moving, people ain't doing. I'm like, dude, you literally had like 30 people all right, over the world right. <laughs> to like literally just be your minions and just run out exactly. into the marketplace. I'm like, just give us time. Like, let's we we <laughs> ramping up towards that, Ronnie. Slow down. Um, so this is good. So you take all that stuff you learn, you combine it, and then you like basically unleash mm -hmm. all that information into the marketplace. Yep. Um, let me ask you a question. Do you like being the face of it? I know it's like best for the business, but you yeah. like being the face of it more than you did when you were behind the scenes. So it's a balance because I like being the face because I know I'm going to get up and work. Like that yeah. was the only thing that was so important to me. I know I'm going to get up and work. I know this is my purpose. I know I'm supposed to be doing this. But I also really love marketing. I always tell people I'm a marketer first. I'm a coach second. Like mm -hmm. I really love, I nerd out on marketing stuff. So it's like I love being behind the scenes of these big campaign launches and all of that. And if it doesn't align with my brand, if I get an idea, I can't do it. Right. So that's why I kind of like both. Um, but being the face of it, it's, it's cool. I like it. But sometimes I'm, I am an introvert. People don't think that because I like I have a, a bubbly personality, but you'll catch me in a minute, like in a social setting, be like, why are you just sitting over there? Like, because I'm like, what am I supposed to talk they about? Be like, well, yeah, come on. Right. Come I'm on like, now. what you want to talk about? Marketing? Like, you know. So that was the thing for me. Um, and I talk about it in a book of how like Murray allowed me to like really get my voice because mm. Adriana, which is my real name, I say is the CEO, the one that's behind the scenes okay. going out of the marketing stuff, but my Ray allowed me to really get my voice and be the person that I really wanted to become. That's good. Yeah. Toughest part about growing this seven-figure business? 
building a team. Yeah. I'm my only child. Like, I'm talking about <laughs> only, only child. Like, I don't have any cousins. So my my aunts and my sisters, like, nothing. Like, it's just me. So the building a team is all about them. Like, you got to make sure you, they feeling good. You got to say certain <laughs> stuff. I'm like, man, like, just catch what I said and let's just move on. So I think building a team has been the hardest part. But also understanding, because we didn't have, like, a slow growth. Right. Like, our first, our seven year, the um, I've been in business since 2019, but I seven the year we made a million dollars. It was my first year doing products, digital products. Mm, gotcha. So imagine this new business making seven figures, and I always say seven figures broke my business. Like it seemed fun until you right. get them seven figure problems and all of the stuff you got to deal with it. So building a team and just understanding what I was supposed to do with this money, what I'm supposed to do with this business, and now I got to serve more people at a higher capacity. I love it. I love it. So um, tell me about Millionaire Mob University. Yeah, so Millionaire Mob University, that's my tribe, that's my <laughs> squad. Um, but I love the university because that's where we teach people how to build campaigns with content, traffic, and all the things that we teach them how to do. Um, but we are transitioning the university to be um, just a really more school, mimic the school system, like have okay. a curriculum and making sure that they understand marketing because I feel like entrepreneurship is the only like career that you could just go in and jump in at any point. Like you couldn't just go and jump in and be a doctor right. or anything. So how can we make sure that you're qualified to be an entrepreneur so that you don't have all of these hardships and you can kind of skip the gray area, you know? So that's what we're doing with Millionaire Mob University. And who, who's the program for? Is it like new? So if I'm new and I'm just getting started, do I need to already have clarity around what the idea is? Can I be a six or seven figure person and jump into it like like where, where would I fit yeah so you definitely need to at least have clarity around okay. what you're offering um but you could be a six figure business a seven figure business it doesn't matter where or you a new are business still. or a new business yep. but as long as you have clarity around what you're ready to sell we can take it from there because we're gonna teach you everything else okay and and my last question for somebody's watching because I know they're saying oh my goodness this is amazing <laughs> it's great but I know they also saying I can't be Monre. Yeah. Right? Like, she says she's an introvert. She ain't no introvert. I am. I, 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 I've seen it. I'm <laughs> right. watching it. Or I right. heard it. Like, whatever, right? Because, <laughs> you know, you tell people that, they be like, uh-uh, uh -uh, I ain't believe lied. it. I ain't believe it, right? <laughs> yeah. So, for that person watching, and they're trying to get their business going, right? And they're like, hey, you know, okay, you're saying, you're talking about campaigns. What does that look like for me? Like, like what's a few steps or a few things they can do to get started in their business? Yeah, so campaigns, first of all, if you're not doing a campaign and you're not following a process, you got to have a process. Have to. And so our eight-step process looks like this. The step one is having your focus product. What's your hero product? What are we selling? And then moving on to concept and strategy, which is step two. Okay. Understand that. What's the marketing message? And then what is the strategy? Like, what's the traffic plan? How many people we need to see that website to our marketing? Mm -hmm. To what are we doing? Then we move on to mapping it out. So, all right, what's our emails going to look like? What the socials going to look like? What's text ads? What's all the things that we got to do to get done? Then we move on to create the content. So a lot of people create the content first but you don't know what you're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. so now you create the content based on what you mapped out and then step five is making sure you actually execute so now we building the funnels we actually launching a brand the business or whatever new product or whatever mm -hmm. we launch it and then we move on to step six which is monitoring and so monitoring is like go back and look at the data like what is happening day one like in 10 hours i'm looking like okay this happened this how many people came to the site yeah. and then move on to step seven which is pivoting because a lot of people wait to the end and it was like oh my campaign didn't go good <laughs> no pivot in the moment if it didn't go good the first week what we doing week two and then moving on to um step eight which is analyzing at the end like this is everything that happened this is what i could take on to the next one so that's the eight step process of launching a campaign i love it so she gave it all to you right you got like eight <laughs> specific strategic yes. steps for you to get started to remove all excuses. It, no excuse. It's no excuse. Like get you only got all eight <laughs> steps, right? Uh, so what they they want to know more about you. They want to know more about Millionaire Mob University. They want to get a hold of your planner. Yes. Like like what exactly do they do? Like where do they go? How can they find out and follow you? Yeah, so if you guys are interested in learning more about launching campaigns, make sure that you follow me at Marketing by Monray. But you also can go to the website at marketingbymonray.com. You can follow us on Millionaire Mob University on all platforms to get your million dollar planner. All right, <laughs> there you go, y'all. You heard it here. Marketing by Monray, she is here. Look, a wealth of information. Yes. Make sure you get your hands on the book, right? Yes. The book is out. 
available yes. now. I forgot we pre-shooting this. So the yes. book is out. By the time yes. you come out, the book is out. Like, what are y'all doing? Like, go get go that get book. Go get it. Go get right, it. Get your hands on. What's the name of the book again? Campaign of My Life. So it takes you through the eight steps to teach you how to launch a campaign, but I tell it through the stories of my life. There we go, y'all. So it gets no better. Yes. All right, thank you for coming out yes, and hanging out with us. I appreciate me. you. Uh, Mastermind <laughs> fam, or collaborative fam, in the building. Yes. Right? Um, and I can't wait to see where you go to the next level. Uh, one, one quick question before we go. Mm -hmm. what, what is the next level for you? Yes. So, I mean, we continue and grow. Like, we want to have a accredited university um, with physical campuses all over the United States. Wow. But, you know, we want to continue to grow. And you're going to take us to a billion dollars. What's hey, up? Hey, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, y'all. You heard it here, right? We're here with Monray. And listen, get started. She gave you eight steps. You have no excuse. We don't want you just listening and he he and I was about to say reviewing. Now leave them reviews, right? Go ahead, go ahead, leave the reviews, right? Watch the reviews. But then get the work. And your ratings, right? But then get to work and make it happen. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Traffic Sales and Profit Podcast. Don't forget to download and subscribe on your favorite podcast platforms. Also, visit us at www.trafficsalesandprofit.com forward slash podcast. On that page, you'll have all the links to follow us on social, me at Lamar Tyler and the at Traffic Sales and Profit brand, in addition to information on our upcoming events, information on how to get a free copy of my paperback book, and more so that you can be the best entrepreneur possible. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next episode.